Welcome to State of Affairs. I'm Steve Adubato. We are, in fact, coming to you from the Agnes Ferris NJDV studio in Brick City, Newark, New Jersey. We are pleased to welcome State Senator Linda Greenstein, who represents the 14th Legislative District, which is where? It is in central Jersey, near Princeton, near Trenton, that whole area around there. Senator, we thank you for coming all the way up to uh, Newark. Let's jump right into this. We just had Mayor Roz Baraka check our website to see that interview. Much of that discussion was about the Newark water crisis. But it is not just Newark. It is other older communities with older pipes, with lead pipes, potential issues. We don't want to scare anyone. Mm -hmm. But there's a joint legislative task force on drinking water infrastructure created in 2016. What is it? And how is it related to this whole discussion of water? Well, that was a task force that really is over already. Um, we presented a, a wonderful report to the legislature. It's on our legislative web page. Um, and it talks about all of the recommendations that came out of that two-year task force. Uh, originally, we were only looking at infrastructure, the age of the pipes, the fact that people don't are not able to disclose where they are because people don't have that information, which is amazing. And um, there really was no plan to fix a lot of the pipes. So we were pushing for that. But in addition, we looked at the lead issue because this was right after Flint, Michigan, and we wanted to see what was going on here. And we weren't surprised to find out that lead is a major problem. Serious problem in New Jersey. Yes, it is. How seriously do you believe the state, and there are many state agencies, the DEP, Department of Health and others. How seriously are we taking this situation? I think we're taking it very seriously now, particularly because of the problems in Newark. Uh, I know the mayor and others are working very hard on that and pushing to make sure that something is done. Um, prior to this, we were talking in terms of, well, we will change the lead service lines, or the water service lines, I should say, within 10 years. Then it went down to three years, and I think now we're thinking even less than that. We're trying to come up with the funds to get these lines changed quickly. You know, it's interesting, Senator. We don't want to scare people, but we want to have an honest conversation. As soon as Flint gets put into this conversation, does it scare the heck out of people? Well, I think the reputation that Flint got was that um, this could happen to you. So but it's that true. was why. And it, it is true, although there... Uh, there was a particular situation where they changed their water supply and that seemed to lead to the problems. Here, we just have that aging infrastructure. Um, there are chemicals that you can put into the pipes that will take the lead away, but even that takes time. You have to flush the system. Uh, it takes time for that to work. And they're also checking as to how uh, the efficacy, if you will, of those chemicals, and Mayor Baraka talked about that as well. Right, and filters haven't even worked, and that's frightening, uh, uh, I think. Exactly. Um, the cost, go back to that. You understand fiscal issues in the state better than most. You understand constituents' response to fiscal <laughs> issues. Yes, we How do. How honest can we be, should we be, in terms of saying, look, if, if you want clean water, it's going to cost us billions, and it sounds like Carl Sagan right now, I'm dating myself. Billions, billions and billions. and billions of dollars to do this over a period of time, which potentially means, even with the borrowing and the bonding, Senator, potentially means significant tax increases. Yes. Do you think the public's ready for that conversation? Because you know they want clean water. Yes. Well, looking at the Newark situation, the issue is the water service lines that go from the street to the person's right. house. They're not very long. And um, the amount to fix those, while it's large, is not astronomical. It is I'm talking doable. about a statewide crisis. Oh, okay. I'm well, talking statewide, not just Newark. Yeah. If you were doing everything, it is a very large number. And Newark, um, just, just using that as an example, uh, it really is the responsibility of the homeowner, believe it or not, Wait to fix those, I, but it's, that's not how, how it's being it, done. Listen, if we're here in Newark where we're taping at NJTV. How many homeowners do you think can come up with the thousands of dollars necessary to do that? It's five to eight thousand dollars they're talking about. I don't think most people can, and that's the reason why first Essex County gave a grant. Of no, no, it wasn't a grant. It was one hundred twenty million dollars. Uh, they mm -hmm. bonded for that over bonded a period for. of time. Yes. That the city of Newark is on the hook for. Mm. I want to be clear, but they bonded. Right. Because Newark couldn't borrow the money on its own. Right. And individual homeowners really can't do it. There's talk about the state providing funding for this. Mm. Um, frankly, I think it's fair. While the 
water line is the homeowners. Mm. This is not just a water line. This is a public health crisis. And in that case, I think the state should be responsible. As you're talking about a public health crisis, uh, last question I want to bring up, climate change. Not just nationally, but in New Jersey. New Jersey, this is real. Oh, it absolutely is, because we have the big shore area. Um, there are many creative things that are being looked at, um, but we absolutely have to do everything we can, first of all. Uh, the governor, in his energy master plan that he's just put out, um, the first thing he has in there is electrifying the transportation system. I'm very big with that. I've been one of the first sponsors of the electric car bills about five years ago, and they've worked that in. Um, they want to electrify buses and, and all other means of transportation. That will get rid of a lot of the greenhouse gases and, and problems that we have. For those who blow this off, no disrespect to the president, the president has said he questions some of the science of climate change. You say? I say he's wrong. <laughs> Because um, I, I believe that the science does show that, uh, that this is a big problem and that we have to do something about it. A national crisis, not yes. simply state by state. Yes. And if we don't, we would have a repeat of hurricanes or superstorm Sandy, but on a basis that would be much larger and uh, could really decimate our shore. We don't want that to happen. It goes inland, too, so it's a major problem. Senator, how long have you been in the legislature? 20 years. Senator Linda... Greenstein, who represents uh, 14th District, which is Trenton, no, it, it outside actually, of Trenton? It's Hamilton all the way up to Spotswood over to Plainsville. 15th District is the Trenton. That's right. Could you imagine it, those things in my head? That's pretty good. Well, <laughs> never mind. Uh, listen, Linda, thank you so much for joining us, Senator. Appreciate Great it. Great to be here. This thank is you. State of Affairs. She came all the way up from uh, Central Jersey to be with us. We appreciate it. We're right back on State of Affairs right after this. I think at NJIT, there are a lot of smart students. I came to NJIT for mechanical engineering because within state, it's one of uh, probably the top three schools for engineering. It sort of creates a friendly competition where you know you can learn from them. It's a great academic school. I feel I'm being challenged, but at the same time, I love the classes I'm taking. The atmosphere of being here is like a, being at an upstart company. It's that same kind of drive, that same kind of passion. Also brought to you by PSENG, committed to providing safe, reliable energy now and in the future. The Northward Center, Adler Aphasia Center, offering therapeutic programming for stroke and brain injury survivors with aphasia. And by International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825.